Sean, you know I'm a free agent. Kind of mentor these young wrestlers. If if I were to give it a shot, do you think I have an opportunity where I could do it maybe? Are you kidding? We took a punter for heaven's <laughs> sakes, dude. McAfee. And you, my friend, you know, are way more athletic than McAfee. So are you kidding? You'd, you'd be a piece of cake, man. You'd be a I'd have to be, be a, a villain, I think. Oh, for sure. You know, coming from New England, you don't have a chance. Doesn't matter where you're actually from, mister. As far as everybody's concerned, you're a New England Patriot, and that's it. So they'll boo you out of the building no matter where you go. I love it. We need to work on your persona. Hurricane Jules. Games with Names presented by WinBet. Download WinBet app and join the team today, guys and ladies. March 31st, 1996, the Arrowhead Pond of Anaheim. Terrible name, Anaheim, California. WrestleMania 12. Two men. One referee, brother. 16,000 screaming fans. One belt. 60 minutes. Hart versus Michaels. This is the Iron Man match. Hello and welcome to Games with Names presented by WinBet. I'm Julian Edelman. I'm Sam Morell, and we're on a search to find the greatest game ever played. Ever. And on today's episode, Sam, we're talking, we're talking to the Heartbreak Kid and Shawn Michaels about the Iron Match from WrestleMania 12. Big, big, big deal. Yeah, it's a big one. Bret Hart versus Shawn Michaels. Me personally, I was a, a Bret Hart guy. I low key was too. I was a Bret I, Hart. I respected Shawn Michaels. I like Shawn Michaels. I, I then became a fan of Shawn Michaels in this next like eight month window because he created Generation X, right? D Generation X. Did he start it? I know it was, it was him. He was it part was of it. Triple H, Billy Gunn, and the Road Dog, and, and uh, X Pac, right? Yeah. That was the crew. They were, I mean, they popularized Suck It. 100%. That was the whole thing. Suck It. Yeah, we'll be joined by Shawn Michaels later, the Heartbreak Kid, uh, the Showstopper. Showstopper. One of the best, one of the best in ring ever, like a guy who could do backflips, high flyer, he everything. Had, when I was watching him, he always had great hip mobility. Yeah. Like when he got in his little flex pose and he got his little leg, like he, you have to have really, really flexible hips on that. So I, I respect his hip flexibility as an athlete. Like I'm going to get into that with him. Yeah. You know, I wonder was, what kind of drills he's doing. Is he doing like hurdle drills? Is he doing yoga? But yeah, we'll check that out. Uh, this March took place, uh, this match took place in March of 96. Yeah. Of course, at WrestleMania 12. That's crazy. Yeah, this was a big one. This had all the big names, too. It had uh, Undertaker, Diesel, Big Daddy Cool, uh, you know, Steve Austin. Steve. This one, young Steve Austin. Ultimate Warrior. He yeah. was there. He was kind of on the He was on the last limb. I think he had a superstar, like, match with, uh, who Who was it? Um, Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Oh, Hunter Hearst, the rich kid from Connecticut. Before he became Triple H. Triple H. Yeah. And he, I, he was my beef with Ultimate Warrior, and because I, I know you're a fan. I just love that he would sprint out I like and that. just slide through like that. That's where my my run down the freaking uh, like before games, I'd always run down the sideline. And I felt like the like just the fucking ultimate warrior when I was doing that. I, yeah, I get how he could fire you up. My problem was the in ring stuff. The, every match was two minutes. He was like a premature ejaculator. He'd promise you the world and then he'd just be like, I'm sorry, you know, bum hey, me out. Unfortunately, I do know. <laughs> I'm joking. This is a joking podcast. He, but he was a, uh, he was just like, he wasn't like an in-ring guy. Like these guys, 60 minutes. This is like Kama Sutra. Well, this is, I mean, this, this match was insane because like you said, two minutes for the ultimate war, this was a 60 minute match. 60. The, the Iron, Iron Man match, which I think the previous long was like 20 minutes before that. You have to have some crazy, crazy stamina, stamina yeah. to go out and, and compete and perform like these two men did for an hour. Like I, I do this boxing training right now. I'm boxing right now. And these are like three minute little like rounds that you do. And you get so tired when you're leaning up against another person and actually compete. Like I couldn't imagine going for an hour. And it started out slow. 
Yeah, it started out so, but I lot. think they were doing that to conserve energy. I mean, probably this, an hour long match of just getting beat down. Well, there's that one moment in the match. I guess Michaels is still kind of the heel at this point, and he and he uh, he chugs a water, and that was like the bad guy move. It's like he's having water. Yeah, he, he, that's I how mean, unhealthy this shit is. They're like, don't you had water. I mean, hydration is bad at that time. You got to earn the water. Yeah. You know, it was one of those things. Why are we doing this match? Because I think this is, you got to call this one of the most iconic matches. Weirdly, I don't think it's Michael's best match. I think he had better matches. You know, the ladder match with Razor Ramon, either of those. But uh, this is two icons. This is, it's almost a passing of the torch here, right? You got Bret Hart as. He was best. a short term champion, though. Yeah. He wasn't like, like he got like short end of the stick. That was a huge thing. Like they, I guess they weren't performing as well for that, that year. And who was diesel had it. And then he took it from diesel and then they needed someone with a little more spunk, a little yeah. more flair. And that's where, you know, Shawn Michaels comes in and, you know, th this was like the start of a generation, like the attitude era. It was a right around the corner, that whole kind of punk that fuck you, like, like almost kind of very Gen Z ish. Yeah, it was, uh, and, and this was, I guess, Sean was like the young guy, 31, Hart is 39 here. And I know he didn't have like a long run, but he was the guy. He was the guy. Technically in sound. Yeah, he was the best. in. Like, if you talk if, to wrestlers, he was a wrestler's wrestler. He, he put dudes over. He was, he was the guy, and he's the guy to put over Shawn Michaels. I don't think they liked each other. They hated level. each other. I, I was watching, I was doing some of my research. Yeah. Shout out to the research research group uh, of the pod. They did an awesome job. Yeah. Uh, and they like really hated each other. Yeah. I was watching one of those documentaries. I guess uh, Shawn Michaels or uh, no, Bret Hart. He was about to go to the WCW in like next eight months or something. And he, he felt that he got the short end of the stick, like I said, where he wasn't champ enough. He wasn't champ long enough. Uh, and he had, I guess, different views. And it kind of, you know, Brett, uh, Shawn Michaels, he was kind of like the young gun, you know, the younger guy that was flashy. And, you know, I, I think they were talking about what were they saying, Sam? Like they just hated each other in, internally and the other wrestlers found out. I, well, I want to ask him about that. And like that's like a huge working relationship, you know, yeah. like they're, they're, act, they're not acting, but they're performing in the ring and then you know, usually after in the locker room, I think they kind of all just chill, drink some beers and they all have like a cool relationship. I think they actually really had some uh, flames between them. It's like if we hated each other. Yeah. It would be hard. Very. It would be. I mean, they they have to be great together. And you have to. There, there was that match, Shawn Michaels versus Hulk Hogan. And I don't think he liked Hulk Hogan. So he's just overselling every hit. Yeah. That's like how you make a dude look dumb in, res in wrestling. You just are like, you're getting hit and you're like, ah. <laughs> I mean, that's how you, you just act like, oh, my God, it hurts so much. You no, know? but that and then behind the scenes, they talked about it on one of the research packets that they actually were kicking each other. And like one of those uppercuts, he really got him. Damn. And like the kick, one of the sweet chin musics, he kicked him. It was like too much. And I, I guess they have a number system on how they 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 tell each other like one through five. They're good. Five through eight, they're not. I don't know if we're supposed to be talking about this because this is real. This is real, folks. This is real. Wrestling real. is real. Wrestling dude. is so real. But they do have number systems to let each other know, like, hey, dude, we're going way too hard here. And I think they were just throwing out tens left and right. It's and we're not talking about your comment section. Uh, just tens everywhere. <laughs> oh, we're not supposed to do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this was uh, the first time Shawn Michaels took the belt. This was big. This is a big moment for him, you know? Yeah, this he he, and I, I guess a lot of the guys, you know, he put his, he put his time in. Yeah, because he was thirty one. He was around for probably what? How many years, Jack? He was six, seven years. Yeah, he was around that for that while, and and you know, he had to pay his dues to to finally get his shine at the match. Because yeah, I mean, he turned pro in eighty four. Eighty four. Ninety six. So so this is his twelfth year. So he was nineteen. He was a pro at nineteen. Yeah, he was. Damn. He dropped out of college. Went right into wrestling got under the training of jose lothario and that was, that was another it. thing that was like a big trainer they had like the whole uh mick and rocky kind of yeah uh attitude or look what do we, what do i say there 
What do you mean? They had the, the whole, mentor mentee. Yeah, uh, something like that. Yeah. yeah, well, they had like an old guy. There were some wrestlers that just came out with a hot chick. And then there were wrestlers who were like, this old guy, he made me, you know? So there was a different, there was a different vibe. I mean, I remember there was one WCW character. Uh, I think it was Chris Benoit's, uh, the, his ringside person. She was just called Woman. <laughs> like, that's how bad the writing was on WCW. They're like, what do we call her? They're like, Woman. We'll call her woman. Woman one? <laughs> yeah. Jeez. She's woman. The 90s. Yeah. So misogynistic. It was rough. It but was dude, rough. You, but then, you you know, sometimes you have the hot chick in your corner, and then sometimes you just have the... Either way, it was cool to have a manager, because that's the dude. Dude, uh, what's his name? The Undertaker's guy? The Paul Bearer? Yeah. That guy was awesome. Who was the guy with the mullet? He was the early one. He was the first one. Jimmy Hart. Yep, Jimmy Hart. Classic. Has the uh, the Paul Bearer was like, uh, in my underwear. <laughs> That voice, that high voice. R.I.P. He was great. Jeez. Well, let's go back to March 31st, 1996. On this exact day. Number one movie in America, The Birdcage. Classic. Uh, Never Robin saw Williams. it. Yeah, Robin Williams and Nathan Lane, Hank Azaria. Who else is in that? Never it's it's saw a it. great, great comedy. I think, did Mike Nichols make that movie? Yeah, all right. The Graduate, Legend. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the number one song in America was "Because You Loved Me" by Celine Dion. She was a she was a monster in the nineties. Oh yeah, the Vegas show. I think we've talked about her on the show before, have we? You were my crown. Definitely got to have one Celine Dion reference one time. We oh, had Gene to. Hackman was also in Birdcage. Oh yeah, Gene big Hack time. Yeah. Love Gene, Gene Hackman. Beast. Beast. Nice. Uh, for the first time ever, the MLB opening day was in. March. Why? This was after the strike, I believe, right? Strike. Who who are the what do they call them when you when you cross the line? Those are scabs. Scabs. Yeah. I wonder who the scab was. Let <laughs> me do some looking on that. The uh I want to pick them. Yeah, this was I mean, this was a tough time for baseball, and then the steroid era kind of saved baseball. Yeah. yeah. And it was probably the the best baseball's ever been. It was pretty awesome. Nineties baseball. I mean, it's right. playoff baseball right now, and I'm excited. It is but, good. But, you know, it, I don't know anyone anymore because you don't watch for 162 games. Well, Tatis, you know, Jr., is trying to save baseball by taking steroids again. They throw him out. His team's thriving without him. It's a bummer. It's a bummer. That guy can, he can crush. And, you know, it's, it's pretty crazy that, you know, all this hype for being, like, the seventh best home run hitter of all time. Like, they, like they're acting like this thing. Of course, it's a New York record, and... I can't believe this was getting what well, with Judge getting national attention. He's not, you say what do you say ninth best home run? What is it, seventh? He's I mean the, it's what uh, uh, I guess Bond Sosa and McGuire, McGuire. Are the only one who have more in the season. Those, uh, we'll count them. I count those. Yeah, count them. But I'm saying you know AL record. I mean it, it just it was a little little much. It was too much Yankees. See like this is Yankees. Boston hate. What the it's hell not is Boston this hate, man. The, the Yankees are are the New York is doing good right now. We got the Jets four and one. We got the the Giants or Giants. What are the Jets three and four yeah. and one? Are the Jets four and one? Giants are five and one right four now. Four and two. Who knows when this comes out? But right now, wow, Saquon's looking like a fucking tank. Looking like a our see, defense looks five and really one good. Let's get back to 96. <laughs> Fargo was released in movie theaters. One of the all-time greatest movies, I think. Uh, one of the best American movies. Coen Brothers are arguably the best of our time, and, and this is maybe their best movie, so classic. Quite, quite good police work you got there, Dan. Or was it, no? Was that yes. bad? Something like that? Oh, my God. The, the buzz saw, the wood chipper, I mean. Holy shit. Yeah. That was that was I don't, gnarly I, shit. Yeah. The Browns become the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah. <laughs> I just always remember Belichick referencing this whole thing and how it went down. It was such a shit show. Yeah. They literally moved in like the middle of the night, in the middle of the season. They tell everyone that they're gonna go to the Baltimore or go to Baltimore. And they, I think they were like four and at the time, and then they end up having a losing record after that. Once the distraction of the announcement was there. That's crazy. They were saying that when they were driving in, like to work for practice, people were picketing, throwing shit at the car like it was their fault. Wow, they like because they, they were mad to lose the team. They they were so mad to lose the team. Damn. And they were four and zero. They were a sexy pick to go to like the AFC Championship that year. They went to the playoffs the year before, and then this comes. They fire Bill. They become the Ravens. 
Chicago or Cleveland doesn't have a, a team for like 10 years, which is that's crazy to me. Yeah, it's a great sports town. If you think about that, they really are. What? Great. What was it? It was like how many years? Let me look real quick. Three years. Well, Four? regardless, regardless, it was know, too much. Cleveland needs a team. Okay. Great fans. Northeast there. Ohio. Yeah. I spent a lot of time there. They love those brownies. Yeah. You know, and I'm I'm sorry that they lost well, to the Patriots. Bernie Kozar. That guy got tortured in the 80s. I don't think they loved him. No, but they still love the Browns regardless. Yeah. It, that's the Ohio. Wasn't that the city was throwing glass bottles at Tim Couch? <laughs> that guy didn't deserve that shit. Get him an offensive line. Took a beat. He's, he's not getting protected by the line. Then he's getting not protected by the fans. No. Hey, it's it's a that's a career killer. That's a, that's a tough to be. It's they a call that place a career killer. If you're a player, you do not want to get drafted to Cleveland. Yeah, was that on your mind? No, not at all. I just wanted to play football. Actually, I think Detroit has that title. I, I was, yeah, I would say so. But as far as fans and their love for the game, they love they They're love great fans, great fans. They love football, and they never win. I mean, there's in any sport. I mean, in Cleveland. The uh, Cavs, the Cavs. I know, but that, they, they had needed a, that. They had like a fifty-year drought. They in needed every that, sport, right? Because the Indians came close in the nineties. A few times, yeah. But it's yeah. good to see that, and I hope that you know the Browns turn it around. But let's uh, let's get to wrestling in the nineties. Yeah. All right. So I mean, Hulk Hogan. I was never really a huge Hogan guy. He was great. He was a legend, but I was always more of a Macho Man Randy Savage dude. That guy fucking ruled. Did you have the pillows? No. The wrestling pillows no. were like like the little guys. I remember those. I had though. those. I had a Hulk Hogan and a Randy Savage. This was more of my brother's generation. Like that earlier, early 90s, late 80s kind of uh this this was like the whole transition from that to the the attitude era, right? Right. Yeah. Of the 90s. So like I knew Hulk Hogan. I loved Randy Savage in the Slim Jim commercials and the Ultimate Warrior coming out of the freaking tunnel, sprinting into this ring. Like I love that. I didn't know it as much. This this actual match that we're about to go over, the Iron Man match, was literally that transitional period from this time to like the Stone Cold, the Attitude Era, Degeneration X. So this was like a huge in in like the history of it. This was a huge a huge game, or I keep on wanting to say game. It is a game. It's games with names, brother. Well, I'll say Match. this too: matches with games. Yeah, matches with yeah, whatever. It, but I'll say this though: I think competition is good, and the WCW became really good around this time because they got Hogan, they got Macho Man, they got you know uh, Scott Hall, Kevin Nash. This is right after they got all. So that you have to step it up when your competition is that good, and I think that made the WWE really you know step it up you got guys like stone cold the rock mankind all those like great characters Undertaker, taker yeah kane 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 was taker's brother remember they fought like i remember i i remember those matches too kane is like a mayor now is he he's like a small town in tennessee mayor i mean these rest i mean you had jesse the ventura jackson be a governor yeah why right not? yeah i mean these guys are these guys are are warriors <laughs> a leader of men and women. Yeah, Kane is the mayor of Knox County, Tennessee, right now. What did I say? I heard that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This was uh, the they needed a new superstar. They needed a new superstar. Uh, I, I guess you know they were kind of struggling. You know, the WWF at the time was struggling to have a superstar of some kind of talent of i don't know you know what it is they, they were weren't good they were good in the ring but you had guys like lex luger who were great in the ring and stuff but then on the mic wrestling is not just about the ring it's, it's performance it's, baby it's, perform it's it's combining sports and entertainment like we you were know? talking about with, with macho man Randy savage and the improv thing about the cream out of the the shirt like these guys like someone bet him i heard you were saying, Kyler, yeah, right? Yeah, Someone that bet the him that, he... that I bet you can't do a promotional video with little creams, like the ones you put in the coffee and like and he did, it. did it. Cream to the top, kept on pulling them out. Like they needed someone like that. And I guess, you know, they felt it was Shawn Michaels. And it was when you look back on it, it was that next character that kind of helped revolutionize what the wrestling environment was going to become. Yeah, because, I mean, Macho Man was a great example. That guy was great on the mic. He was great in the ring. The Rock, another great example. You know, Stone Cold. You need that to to thrive. Chris Jericho, all those dudes. Uh, so the Attitude Era is coming up. Uh, this was the new generation stars. Michaels, Hart, Undertaker. Guys with big 
fresh personalities. They needed that freshness. Yeah. You know? This was... Uh, Monday Night Raw, they created that. Remember that? Monday Night Raw was the shit. I used to get so fucking mad with the cliffhangers. Oh, yeah. I'd go to bed at like... Because it was it, 8 to 9 or 9 to 10? No, it was late. It was, I think it was 9 eight, to 10. I think it was 8. 8, eight to 10. 9. Because we were young, so it, it may have been 9... But I remember going, I'd be like, no, I would look at the clock. I'm like, it's going to end right here. No, why? <laughs> the best is when, when you would get like a happy ending that would flip like your guy won, but then people would just come out and start beating the shit out of him with a yeah. chair. And you're like, come on. It was, was this close. The cliffhangers yeah. were insane. The attitude air was just around the corner. Like we said, 97 after the Montreal screw job. And that was had these that, guys. That was Harden Michael. Yeah. So he, it was. Yeah. This was a look into the future. This this specific match, this is what jump started the Attitude Era. Yeah, that's when all the guys. I remember when Chris Jericho came. It was it was a dah, eh, uh, eh. remember that weird countdown Y two J. I I met him a couple times because I did a show and they all these guys live in Tampa because yeah. it's like wrestling headquarters. So I remember I did a gig Side Splitters Great Club in Tampa, and Jericho's in the crowd, and his laughing is so he was fucking drinking. And his laugh is so booming and noticeable that everyone's like, I tell a joke and he'd be like, ha, ha. <laughs> everyone's just looking at him. I'd be like, holy shit, this, I'm, do I have to address that Chris Jericho is here? And I was like, I'm not going to address it. I think that'd be weird. So I don't do it. But uh, he wrote me a nice message after. And then it, and when I did a sports show in town in New York City on MSG, he, he did an episode and it was the weirdest episode we've ever done because we had a format and he was just like, nah, screw format. And he just took over. And I was like, man, it worked. Was he good on the mic? He was great. He's, See, it's what he does. That's he's what a, these guys do. He's, he, Jericho's another guy, great on the mic. And he's doing backflips. He's doing the lion tamer. He's, he's got it all. He's one of those great. He's like cut from this cloth of like Shawn Michaels, uh, Bret Hart type of wrestlers. Shawn Michaels. It's be pretty cool. What were you doing in 1996, Sam? You were 10 years old. I was trying to rent stuff like this from the block. If we went to Blockbuster, it was like either an Adam Sandler movie or uh, or a wrestling movie. Because to me, it was like, you know, you're looking at the value and you're like, well, if I see a comedy, it's going to be 90 minutes. These pay-per-views are like three hours. So yeah. I'm like, that's so much time. This is before TikTok and YouTube. I'm looking like how much time I can get lost on a TV screen. Yeah, I, I remember just begging my parents to get pay-per-views to watch these these wrestlemanias and you know i used to hang out with my buddy jeff belwamini and we would have to go to his house because he had the illegal box and so you, you could get it you know i don't know wwe might get mad at me if we didn't give him that uh that pay-per-view but we used to go there watch it we we get beer or uh, not beers. We were ten years old. <laughs> you getting fucked up? Yeah, we we would get coats and old. slam them. Yeah. I mean, and then also, you know, it's pretty crazy ironic. I have a pretty good story. All right, about the Attitude Era and and this time, I was like probably later in this year. I was in I was at my school in elementary school. <laughs> And we had to sit down for lunch. You sit down and then you have a first bell and then you guys can go out and play. So you had to eat. And there was old man, Mr. Callis, walking by. He gave me some lip because I was like, I mean, I was a little, little asshole, probably a little, little kid running around trying to make trades for fucking Lunchables. And uh, he sat me down, yelled at me, he said, you can't be up yet. And as soon as he walked away, full suck it sign, giving him suck it's. Yeah, fuck you, <laughs> Mr. Callis, little fucking 10 year old me. Doesn't see, right? Doesn't see, but a lady walking by. Literally, we had a fence. This is oh, terrible no. podcasting, but I had a fence, if you can see. Yeah. And a chain link, and a lady walked by and saw me because all my boys were laughing and we were all just doing it. And she singled me out, called Mr. Callis over, tells Mr. Callis, and he goes, you flip me off? And brings me office, get full suspended. I go, I gave him a sucking sign. It wasn't even flip off. It was a sucking sign. I love you begging the principal. I didn't say fuck yeah. you. I told him to suck my I, penis. I, 100%. What the hell? And, you know. They're responsible for a lot of kids doing that. Oh, my. I, you know, I got suspended. That was literally like your mom's grounding you. And you're like, mom, if you're not down with this, I got two words for you. Suck it. You know. <laughs> She's and, like, now you're grounded an extra week. I'm like, all right. My mom had my back, though. My mom goes, you didn't even see it. 
Yeah, he it didn't is? see it. He didn't do it. Did you, did you do the? Did you do the this one or did you do the cross? Oh, I did a a full jump spread. <laughs> full jump spread. Regular both. I, like you know when you're a kid you would be going like a bunch. <laughs> yes. And he, you know, I got caught red-handed. I had to sit at home, but that was my story. But that's great. That Dude, was me in 96. When I was, I don't, so young Julian doing the Suggit, I did a similar thing. When I was in school, this was the pop, uh, the rise of Mick Foley, Mankind, <laughs> and Mr. Sacco. And you probably know where this is going. I came in a science class with a sock in my hand. And this kid, I got him from behind. I Sacco him in the middle of class. And the teacher was like, get out, get out. But everyone's cheering. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm sockling a dude. And he was like, oh, oh, stinky sock. Oh. Yeah, he freaked out. Mr. I got socko. I got thrown out of class, but I did socko a kid. Did you get in trouble? Oh, yeah. I got like thrown out and sent to the principal, but it was awesome. I socko'd a dude. Yeah, that like the, the crowd must have been going crazy. They went kids. wild. They were like, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Anytime any rebellion went down. The whole collective group of the uh, class would just go like, yeah, one for the kids. Well, I, it was, I was new in school too. So it was like, it was a risk. I was like, if this goes south, I'm a pariah, but it worked out. And everyone's like, he's one of us. New to the school. You were the new kid on campus. And soccoing I, people. I soccoed a kid. Yeah. I went for it. What, it, what, what you were 10. I was probably like 12. That's, that's ballsy. I, I, I changed schools too. I mean, when you're like the new kid in a new school, yeah. it's like you have to do something. I had to, I raced like fastest kid in the school and that's how I got my, my, my standard. We Damn, that's we, like, that's so like an eighties movie. I thing. went and I looked at Leo Ortiz. I said, who, who, they used to do this base race thing and he was a year older than me, Yeah, but I was held back. So we were the same. You're age. fast as hell. And we did the base race yeah. and we go around second and we collided with each other. We hit each other. First day of school there, hit each other. Almost like low key, kind of knocked out. Get up and finish the race. One, Leo. I know you remember that. Uh, yeah. But that was what I had to do. You you go over and socko someone. See, that's a comic versus an athlete. That's true. It's a you comic showed, versus. You an showed athlete. your skills. I just got thrown out of class. Well, we, that's skill right there. You Mick perform. Foley. Mick Foley was the man. Shout out Mick Foley. I did like mankind. Oh, he was the best. He got. Um, he got. He used to have some crazy. Like he was bleeding always. I remember. Remember, didn't, remember the ladder match? He had a ladder match and he fell on the tax. Was it the tax? I think that was the was Hell that in the Cell. That was the Undertaker. Oh, the one. Hell in the Cell. That That's was, what it was. That was fucking I rough. used to love when they got the props, like the Hell in the Cell stuff. I get right. so disappointed when they didn't. Let's right, talk got, Let's talk about this one. First off, we got the Heartbreak Kid, the showstopper, Shawn Michaels, 31 years old, out of San Antonio, Texas, 6'1", 225. He's a high flyer. He's uh, He can he can do the backflips. He could do the flying elbow. He, he did it all. Uh, his signature move was, of course... The sweet chin music. You remember that. The, he'd, he'd wind up for it by doing that shit. I love yeah. that. I tried it this morning. I, I think I may have hit my hurt my hip flexor. Really? Yeah, you tried I, to get up? That's why. Yeah, I, I, I. That's why I was like so impressed with the hip mobility. That's where that comment came from. I was like, "Oh, we're doing Shawn Michaels this morning." I was in the shower, ball naked, Barry did a double leg kick, chin music. I was like, "Oh, that hurt my knee. Maybe I'm not ready." Well, this was he outlasted Diesel in the Royal Rumble, which is how you got the match. At the main oh my god, the Royal Rumble was he, always fun. It was great. He teased retirement. Did. With 30 well, because he was 31, he was in the league, or he was in the, you know, the, the foundation, or what is the federation for 12 years? They didn't give him a shot. So this was like his time. This was his yeah. time to shine. This was awesome. Yeah. In yeah. February, he won. Uh, he won in your house six over. Uh, we shouldn't be saying. Oh, no, we could say his name. They, they wrestled. He was, uh, we could oh, say his name. Yeah. Suffered a concussion, though. That's pretty uh, relevant these days. Yeah, I'm sure someone nowadays would probably be spotting him. Say, hey, you can't wrestle or you can't be a superstar right now. You got to go in the protocol. <laughs> to a February, he won in your house six over Owen Hart. Owen Hart. Yeah, great wrestler. Suffered a concussion. Yeah. Uh, at this point, he still didn't have the title. Uh, arguably, never won the belt. At this point, he's the greatest ever to never win. Yeah, he was. I think. Who is that? In, like football daniel jones maybe i don't oh, know what do you think dan marino <laughs> dan marino marino it is marino maybe marino. charles barkley in basketball charles barkley and well malone ewan yeah. stockton that whole 90s missed Owens. out because of mj 
You know, there's a lot of guys who <laughs> Chris <laughs> Paul in today's NBA. Yeah. Yeah. And he had his fair share of controversy. Did the playgirl spread? Respect. I actually <laughs> he, he hung I, on. I remember dude. I remember one the kid actually I don't want to refer I can't reference him because I don't want his mom to know we found her playgirls. Whoa. But we found full playgirls. I'm like sitting here. We're like it was literally this time in my life. I was it was probably like 1995, six, Damn. maybe seven. We found my buddy's playgirl, mom's playgirls. It was like it was weird. Like I, I didn't realize they had them. <laughs> it low key kind of traumatizing. Really? Nah, it wasn't what it sounded. Oh, let his mom get some. I thought those I, were predominantly bought by gay dudes because I remember the story that Burt Reynolds hung dong and so maybe girl. it was his dad's. Maybe it was his dad's, dude. But the story was Burt Reynolds hung dong in Playgirl thinking like all these chicks would be like, whoa. And then it was just like, he just became like a gay icon. Old Burt Reynolds. Yeah, the numbers say it is primarily bought by males. It's mostly a dude bought magazine. I think. Wow. And to save you guys a Google search uh, there at home, Shawn Michaels didn't show dong. Oh, it was didn't his Didn't show butt? dong. The, the championship Eric Dickerson belt was in did the way. Playgirl too, didn't he? Let me look into Eric Wait, Dickerson. Did so he just, I don't understand. He just hung. He just hung butt. What did he hang? Yeah, you could you could see both cheeks. And let's then see, let's see some of these pics. The meat was covered by the uh, the big belt. So this was post WrestleMania 12. Oh, he's okay. got the belt laying on his side belt covering. But then there is a back shot so you can see the cheeks. Damn. Yeah. It would have been nice to see him in some assless traps. Yeah. Would you ever do Playgirl? I did. Uh, I did. Uh, I did body issues. For yeah, no, you look yeah. great. You look great. Uh, I wouldn't do Playgirl, though. No? No. Just it's not as classy. I don't know. Do, is Playgirl round still? Let me check I don't even think out. so. I mean, he's a huge name to, to be in Playgirl, Shawn well, Michaels. Well, there was Eric Dickerson. He did Playgirl. Yeah, did he, did he hang Dickerson? Let me take a look real quick. If he, I don't he think he it. did. He didn't? I don't think he hanged on. What's the point of not what's But you the point can see it through it the not, banana hammock. Really? Oh, yeah. You could. <laughs> well, let's get to Bret Hart, a.k.a. Bret the Hitman Hart. Yeah. At this point in his career, he was 39. Uh, Calgary, Canada. Yeah. Canadian, eh? I just went to a wedding this past weekend, and there was a Canadian family. Those people are outrageous. They, <laughs> they are, like, they're the so The whole country? Nice. Well, no, just Canadian people in general. Like, they're insanely nice, but yeah. those people know how to drink. Oh, they drink. Like, they're low-key drunks. They, uh, but they're again? they're happy drunk, so that they're never really drunk. Yeah, back to Bret Hart. Signature move was a sharpshooter. My sister used to get that a bunch back yeah. in the day. I used to give her the sharpshooter all the time. Classic. Try to break her little back. <laughs> uh, pink and white tights. We were you were you were he made pink cool. Yeah, you didn't see a lot of tough dudes rocking pink at this point. I thought it was a it was a power move. It's a it's a secure man to rock pink. Yeah, uh, he. He he was definitely like a tough guy and he was well respected. He wasn't like the whole attitude era, and that's you know kind of why they kicked him to the curb, I think. But no his respect. toughness, like no respect for the best there was, the best there is, and the best there ever will be, Brett the Hitman Hart. Gotta show that guy some respect. Wish we had him on this episode too. Yeah. But you know. No, he wasn't ready for it. And <laughs> he wasn't ready for it. The Hart versus Michaels rivalry before the Iron Man, the Hart Feder uh, the Hart Foundation, Hart and the Avil Anvil Anvil versus the Rockets, Michaels and Marty, the Rockers, the Rockers, <laughs> the Hart Foundation. Sam's beating me to it this episode. Gee, the Hart Foundation it was uh Hart and uh, and the Anvil, Jimmy the Anvil, right? And then uh, the Rockers, Michaels and Marty Janetti. Uh, 1999 or 1989 at MSG. Oh, wow. Finished in a draw. Oof. Hate a draw. 91. Oh. I know that was the cliffhangers. I hated the draws. It make me so mad as a kid. 1991 in Tokyo, won by the Heart Federation or Foundation. Uh, first ever ladder match for the Intercontinental, Intercontinental Championship. Heart was the holder having captured in 1991. Was won by Hart. The WWF Championship Survivor Series main event. Also, Hart won it again. Yeah. So this was his time. This was the time. He was ripe for the picking. He was as the Shawn guy. Michaels probably thought. So WrestleMania, it the is match. it's the Super Bowl of 
WWE. This yeah. is the night. This is the biggest night. Uh, the Iron Man match. This was the first one ever. 60 minutes. Who can get more pinfalls or submissions in 60 minutes? Uh, you know, I think it, it could be 30 or 60, but it's this 60. is 60. Yeah, yeah it's, it's interesting they count the 30 ones. There were two 30-minute ones beforehand. Bret Hart was in both of those. Oh, wow. This is a 60-minute yeah. one. This though. is a 60. But this is the first 60. This was the, the first 60 minute wow. match this was insane yeah the first which you got to think that's got to be so hard for these guys like to think when you're tired and like any mistake with these superstars like you could break something like yeah. a neck or an arm or like you know what i mean didn't stone cold break a neck in one of the matches i think he didn't and yeah. then you get the classic driver. the classic neck brace yeah with the bud stone cold yeah things yeah. we remembered I, I remember it started slow, but they had they had to start it slow. You know, you gotta you gotta feel out the the match. If you're doing a three hour porno, there better be at least thirty minutes of dialogue. You can't just go right into full penetration. You got to work up to it, and that's why they you know you got to start with the foreplay. That's why they were doing a bunch of headlocks and flips, and they were showing off. Look, I, people were walking out, but they couldn't handle the the greatness, the technicality uh, of these two. They were superstars. technicians, and if you watch it, it's like dancing. Yeah, you know, a lot of this is like dancing, and, and and to see the the fluidity of how the, each of every move they did to each other looked like, I mean, it was in, insane execution for sure. You know, things we may have forgotten, some fo uh, some fans booing, yeah, because of the lack of action at the start. I think that's, I think that's spoiled fans. They don't, you yeah. know, what are we doing? These guys yeah. are about to go out there and kick each other's asses for an hour, like. We already went into this. Can you imagine? Maybe they didn't understand what it was. Maybe they understand that it was because. Can you imagine leaving and then you left one of the great matches in wrestling history? It's like those Miami fans who would leave early in the finals with the Heat, and then the Heat won, and they tried to get back in, and they wouldn't let them back in. They were like, "Sorry, dude." Maybe they had, you know, maybe their their kids had school early the next day, kind of like Miss, you know, my buddy Mark. His he had the the kids had school left the Super Bowl a little early that we came back and won twenty eight to three, you know. So that's that's the that's the consequence of leaving when your kids have school the next days, you know. Yeah, you may miss. You can miss one day though for an a Iron lifetime match. story though. Classic for a lifetime story. A you, life you're allowed to miss school. I'm not a dad here. Yeah, you know, I'm just saying these are the people that may have left. <laughs> yeah, people that may have left. Uh, the arena or any competition, you know, they, they probably... Well, it's like you kept saying in that 28-3 to 3 game, it's going to be a hell of a story. It's going to be a hell of a well, story. Well, these, these people lost their story if they left. So if they left. Shame on them. Shame. So uh, let's... Uh, and b the things we also remember. Oh, Gorilla Monsoon. Remember that dude? No. He instructed Earl, uh, Earl Hebner, the referee, to continue the match... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. ...under sudden death rules... As Hart began to leave with the title, because it went to overtime, so yeah. this is an hour long match, and they kept it going. But by, by the way, he was off the he was off the uh, the ring at, already walking in. Yeah, they by said the way, no, 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 no. Is Gorilla Monsoon the greatest name in wrestling history? <laughs> you can't be a lawyer with that name. <laughs> I'll be your attorney. I'm Gorilla Monsoon. You're like nah, you're, <laughs> you're 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 running wrestling. Gorilla Monsoon. So there must be a winner. I love that. That's you know. Have to. Even in the NFL, you could tie. Not in the playoffs, though. Not at WrestleMania, you no. can't. Yeah, you can't. Not in the playoffs. You cannot tie. And they had the same time, the same overtime rules here. They get back in the ring. I, I still don't understand how, because if you remember, I believe Bret Hart had him in the sharpshooter for like 30 seconds, and no one ever not tapped out of a sharpshooter. And then the the match ended. They call it a draw, whatever. To have the ability uh, with Shawn Michaels to like get out of the sharpshooter, he's dead tired. Give him the sweet chin music and get the title. That, that was, they put him over because when you don't tap out of the great guy's great move, you're first time ever. You're now the dude. You're the guy now. He is so. For the gaming corner presented by WinBet, here's what I'm thinking we do. Shawn Michaels sings his own theme song. We all know the iconic theme song. The I'm just a bullet. I'm not boy your bullet. toy. 
I'm not a sexy boy. So you, you can, how many times can you say sexy boy? I think you could hit five easy. Ooh, five? Well, you can hit five because here's why. He's Because you're able to double up on this one. Because if you do the chorus too. I'm just, I'm, I'm just, what is, how does it go? I'm just a sexy, sexy boy. boy. Sexy boy. Yeah. I'm not your boy toy. Bo uh, okay, so should we count boy toy too? Just sexy boy? Sexy okay. boy. All right. All right. I think you, can we hit, so four and a half? Five? Four and a half. Four and a half. You can easily do this. The, yeah, we, four and a half sexy boy gaming corner presented by WinBet. What is it? So we're going to go four and a half over or under? I think that's the move. Boy toy? I think you could hit it easily. We'll see. I it's it just if sometimes I get into the uh I get into the conversation when we're talking to these people and then I get like, all right, we got the, t the shot clock. How how long do we have them? Um, then you f fully forget the prop bet. Yeah. Well, I'll remind you. All right. I'll even throw out a sexy boy if I don't see you. Is it a is it a eat. joint sexy boy uh count? Should I jump in too? Four yeah. and a half. So then let's do six point five. Six and a half. Seven. If we're both boys. doing it, we gotta hit. Oh, if it's both fudge. of us, easy. Uh, and we can hit seven. That's tough. I'm just gonna call him sexy boy. <laughs> I'm gonna start off. Saying, what, what if it opens hey, Sean, with? Can I call you sexy boy? And he's gonna say no, and we're like, well, there goes that. That wasn't. That didn't work. No. Don't ask for consent on sexy boy. You just have to go for sexy boy. There will be no consent. Just Shit. go for it. I wonder what kind of guy he's going to be like. Me too. I'm curious. Is he cool? This is, I haven't. Yeah, this is. I've met some wrestlers. Who is the coolest ones that you've met? I used to hang out with. Who's Gronk's boy? Mojo. Oh, yeah. He's great. Yeah. I used to go. We. This was before he was like in the actual league or whatever or with the WWE. He's with the WWE. No. I think he should be. We should have that. But Mojo, he we used to go out in Miami together. These guys are maniacs. That's I don't get it because they. I want to ask Sean about how he parties because these dudes would be on the road the whole year, and they're. It's not like they're just on the road. No, they're, they're fucking working out. They're think about how hard. I wonder it is what their to, weekly regimen was. Yeah, so I want to know. I, I want to know. That. There's so much to know. Anyway, like, do they have a couple days part like? Like scheduled out. All right, I'm gonna party for him here this day to this day, so I can recover by match weekend. Or I don't, I don't know, know. You know, we'll find out in a minute. We're about to be joined with the heartbreak kid himself, the sexy boy. That one doesn't count. Sexy Shawn Michaels. Boy. Football playoffs are coming up. Who's gonna make it? I am. I know one thing for sure. I'll be betting on it using the WinBet app. And if you want to join us, download the app and use promo code XGWN. Why those letters? I don't know. Seems confusing. Very. XGWN. And when you bet $25, you get $50. That's free cash money. Wow. Offer subject to change. Terms and conditions at winbet.com. Must be 21 or older to participate. We're going to introduce you here. Uh, one of the greatest ever do it. An icon, a living legend, the heartbreak kid, heartbreak. the sexy boy, the four-time WWE world champion. Two-time Hall of Fame inductee, one solo, one from DX, two-time Royal Rumble winner, uh, and the current booker at WWE Next, Shawn Michaels. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. And look, uh, when you guys say 35 and uh, look, it's code, it's code for old, um, but I've got, <laughs> but I've, I've come to, I've come to appreciate it. I really have. Um you know, uh, looking back, um, I'm very honored to, uh, I don't know, you've had so many people kind of grow up with you, you know what I mean? It's, it's a pretty cool thing when you, you get to that point later in life where you can appreciate that. Uh, and that is exactly where I'm at now. So thank you guys very much. Can you just kind of start this off by telling us what your life was like in 1996 going into this? You were 31 years old. You were paying your dues for so long. This is when you first got your, 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 your belt. Like this was like probably what you've been working for for so long, but you're also a rock star. So what was life like in 1996? Well, I have to say, so in 1996, it was as as many people know that the uh, uh, the life of Shawn Michaels got pretty dark <laughs> at one time. But in '96, again, building up to this moment, um, it, it was it was um, it was feeling like you're going to be acknowledged 
by you know the company and the industry as as being the guy i mean that's something that uh the wwe championship i think sort of symbolizes um in in the careers of of any guy that gets uh, to hold that title is you know the industry uh the company acknowledging you at least for that moment in time um as being certainly one of if not the best in you know in your field and so that's honestly the that's the i think the most satisfying thing for any uh you know athlete any uh, talent that comes through the wwe when you get recognized with a with a championship and certainly uh the world championship it's it's just that it's sort of a pat on the back, the acknowledgement that you know that you've made it, that you you know you're being honored by your your company and your peers as as being the guy that uh, they feel like can can carry the company. So, on one hand, it's a huge, obviously a uh, you know opportunity. It's obviously a pretty heavy burden as well. Um, but clearly, it's everything as you said, Julie, that that, that you work for, um, and it is. It's it's culminating. Um, Obviously, at WrestleMania is ideal. So that's one of those things that, again, not everybody has it happen at WrestleMania. So for me to have it happen at WrestleMania and then with the World Championship, it was a lot of worlds coming together that was, you know, unbelievably satisfying and, you know, felt pretty decent at the time. Man, you're on the road at this point. I mean, what, almost a whole year? Every Almost every week, right? I mean, is that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're, you're, you're on the road 250 plus Woo! days a year. That's, I mean, that's a lot. I, I'm a road comic and that my body hurts from traveling. You guys, you land, you work out, you train. I mean, is there time to party? Well, look, we made time for that. <laughs> by, by, by all means. Yeah, there's certainly, uh, the one thing is, is that there was always uh, after the show. And so, and clearly at this point in my career, I, I was least good about do, waiting until after the show. Um, I would get to a point to where, you know, it was any any time of day if I if I felt like it. Um, but no, it certainly it is. Look, it was uh, you know you mentioned it earlier. Kind of a, it was a kind of a rock star lifestyle. It was it could be a lot of fun, um, and you could be obviously the, the life of the party, a pretty popular guy. Um, it was not a bad gig, shall we say? <laughs> now, what's a weekly routine? So you had at that point, Raw was coming on. So you had Mondays and you guys would do, you guys would be traveling all week. How did you get your training? And like, as an athlete, we, as a football player, we had to get four workouts in each week before the week and you had to do it on your own. Uh, did you have everything slotted? Like, all right, I had my train time here. I had my party time here. I had, you know, my preparation time here. How, how was a weekly schedule for you guys? You travel on this day. Cause you know, as athletes, we're all creatures of habit, especially, you right. know, you guys are, you guys, I mean, watching this stuff, you guys taking so much beatings. How did you recover? Like, what was that weekly schedule like? Well, so uh, the days off, so we do, uh, we got to the schedule where we're doing Raw on Monday, but uh, Monday doing Raw would be the last event. So you'd go home Tuesday morning. Um, you'd have the rest of the, of the day, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. You'd be at home, if again, if you didn't have other appearances or something of that nature. That was your rest time. That was obviously, you know, you're still training, excuse me, in the afternoon. But Friday, you fly out in the morning, you get to the town, you find a Gold's Gym or you find a gym somewhere, you go train, come back, you eat, you go to the show, uh, you have the show that night, you're done 10, 1030, go back to the hotel, you know, hang out, have fun for a little while. Then you get on a plane the next morning. And do the same thing. You fly to the town, uh, you get there, you find a gym, you train, you know, wash, rinse, and repeat. Jeez. Uh, and you do that throughout the week. I can't imagine you're getting any sleep at this time, too, because you're wired from the from the match. You get back to the hotel. You can't just sleep. No. Well, look, I can really notice it's so crazy because now – if I'm on the road uh, and, and now like I'm, I'm, you know, I go to bed at nine o'clock, except for the nights that we have, you know, that we have uh, television and we have to work late. Um, but yeah, to your point, look, you're done at the building at 10 or 1030 and you are ready. You're ready to go. Um, so, but it's amazing, you know, young, you know, youth will uh, break through, you know, break down a lot of barriers. Oh, yeah. You know, you could live on four or five hours sleep. Um, 
But even again, if you you know you're in bed by two, three in the morning, you know what I mean. Depending on how long the flight is, you get a couple hours that night. You sleep on the flight. You know what I mean. Uh, you get up and you do the same thing. Oh, yeah. But youth youth is a is an amazing thing. It's it's crazy how much your body and look also what your body gets used to. Yeah, um, I'll say that it's it's you know you you understand. And again, you know, Julian, I'm sure you understand. You know, you get to where your body's accustomed to being through a physical endeavor on a regular basis. And as long as you keep doing it, um, it's sort of that callousness that it keeps up. It's the minute you stop, if you ask me, and then you try to get back into it is the hard part. The best way to stay in shape is never get out. That was always the yeah, thing, absolutely. you know, because it was always those fucking four weeks of when you, you get out of shape after a season, you go party with the boys and then uh, you're so out of shape by the time you're like, I'm never getting out of shape again. You're throwing yeah. up. But I, I, I'm fascinated with you. You went to you would find a gym in the towns you're in. So like now that I'm retired, I go do this gym life, too, where you go to find an Equinox to get a workout in. And there's like a, I never like it because you always have people sizing you up, especially they find out who you are. I could only imagine if you guys walked in all rocked up over there on the 150s doing some presses like did people ever give you guys any shit in those gyms well so look good fortune for me is i'm going into the gym i'm going in there with nash who's seven foot 300 pounds i'm going in there with scott hall six eight two eighty five you know hunter um you know six four two fifty so uh and look everybody knows you are and for the most part a lot of the times it was a it was a number of us, you know what I mean. So it's kind of like a crew of guys going in there, and it doesn't take long, you know. I think for the most part, everybody was uh, pretty cool with the fact that we were there. You know what I mean? Uh, that was obviously good for their business to have us there. Um, we had, you know, at that time there were mostly Gold's gyms. A lot of places they were always really good to us. But for the most part, look, even if you had some people that kind of had a, you know sticking her ass, pardon my language, you know, about you, you know, you'd pay the five bucks or the 10 bucks to get the workout in, uh, you know, pay for tanning, whatnot, you know what yeah. I mean? You just whatever it took to get it done. You talk about the tanning. I, as a hairy Jew, I appreciate the hairy chest representation. <laughs> you were the only dude with it, with chest hair and Julian's brought yeah. this up. You could have looked more ripped if you shaved your chest, but you chose not to. Yeah. Well, so look, I've never shaved my legs, my chest. Thank goodness my wife does my back now. Like, <laughs> so I gotta get a wife. Yeah, that was look. I, yeah, I don't know. So I, it was always, I don't know. That was just one of those things. I was never a bodybuilder. I got to be honest. The best shape I was in, um, I was really fortunate, I guess, to get that way. Like I said, it was just training and the guys I hung around. I never knew that much about diet and training. I just hung out with the guys, you know, I ate the same thing they ate. I, you know, train around the, you know, the same time and with them. Um, honestly, it wasn't, I can remember getting one time really big and heavy and, uh, you know, <laughs> Kevin Nash and Scott, you know, used to look at me and go like, Hey, Sean, you know, like we're 280 to 90 you can't match us meal for meal, beer for beer. You know what I mean? Like you're too, <laughs> you know, you're two fifteen. You know what I mean? You can't, you know, and I'm like, Oh, I, I don't know. It's like, you can't, you can't eat that much. You can't, you know? And I was like, all right, you know, because I can eat, I mean, I'm a repressed fat kid living inside of me, uh, that I tried to you know that I've had to keep slim and, and relatively in decent shape over the years. But I honestly didn't, you know, never really knew that much about it. I wasn't as, you know, uh, as bright in the gym as, as the other guys were. It was still, I was never a gym rat. Yeah. I mean, it was still early too. I mean, the information age of, you know, training and diet and recovery. I mean, no one really did it even in our sport back. In, I mean, probably in the nineties that it was starting to transform once you hit that, you know, like the two thousands, mid two thousands, two thousand tens. But I can only yeah, imagine. I just, that old yeah, think about that old diet complex they used to talk about, you know, with the carbs and the this and the that. I mean, hell, that stuff's all wrong now. You, you yeah. know, you didn't have, yeah, you just didn't have all the science behind it. You know what I mean? Respectfully, you're going by whatever Muscle and Fitness said. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, you know, and they're talking about guys that are doing the Olympia and obviously probably, you know, 
having enhancement help here and there. You know yeah. what I mean? So you need about whatever you want. I got to ask you, because first off, Sweet Chin Music, one of the most iconic finishers ever. The flying elbow beforehand, the stomp, everyone knows it. D comics, we shit on each other for each other's acts. We make fun of each other's jokes. Did you, your crew, sh Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, would, would they ever make fun of your moves? Would you guys ball bust over that stuff? Well, so yeah, well, well, we used to bust each other balls over all sorts of stuff. Um, I, you know, only stuff from an in ring standpoint was, I don't know, stuff that we would, you know, we'd see that we, you know, would tell one another, like, dude, don't do that again. You know what I mean? That's like, that's brutal. That sucks. Um, you know, I always tell a story about, uh, you know, Kevin Nash, big old huge guy. And I thought it was cool that he could leapfrog. You know what I mean? And so to watch this big dude leapfrog, and I had him doing it in a couple of matches. And then one time, you know, we're driving down the road and Scott Hall's in the back seat, and he's like, hey, let me ask you a question. And Kevin and I are up front and we're like, all right, what is it? How come the biggest guy in the company avoids contact? And we sat there and thought about it. And I was like, "Dang, you're right." I said, "Kevin, don't ever leapfrog again." You know what I mean? And so I don't know. Yeah, we're just there were just times that you know we would we would call it monitor time, where on TV days, um, you know, you'd sit there and you'd watch guys matches and you just rip them to shreds. You know what I mean? Just, you know, you'd, you know, pick apart little things that, you know, they saw wrong and stuff like that. So we did that. We did that a bunch with one another. Um, but, uh, you know, it's like anything. It was like, a, you know, a, a locker room full of athletes. So there was, you know, a fair amount of ribbon and, and, and messing around going on behind the scenes. Hell yeah. I mean, that's crazy. Now, we all know the famous song, Sexy Boy. I, I, I don't know if did you did you write that song? No, but so you sang it. Uh, Jimmy Hart, yes, I, so I ended up singing it. Jimmy Hart uh, wrote it, and originally Sensational Sherry sung it. Um, and then Jimmy Hart came to me one time. He's like, hey, baby, you, look, we're thinking we got this great idea. You know, maybe you sing your song. And, and I was, and I said, I said, Jimmy, God, I can't, I can't carry a note. I said, My voice is deep. I said, I can't sing it all. He says, don't you worry, we'll get in the studio. You know, we've got all the stuff that we can do. We can fix it. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, all right. I mean, I'll give it a try. Um, but yeah. So I mean, look, I can't, I can't carry a note to save my life. Um, but they somehow, you know, they do all that cool stuff they do with music. And um, and look, I never, when I was going through this process of that song and my character and everything else. You know, in your in your in the theater of your mind, you're picturing yourself being maybe a bit more, you know, I don't know, like manly and a bit more like I figured it would be like, I don't know, be more of kind of a rougher, tougher, ass kicking type guy. And but then all of a sudden I turned into this, I don't know, this dude wearing assless chaps and shaking my ass and dancing and half strip teasing and stuff like that. But the more I did it, the more natural, the more uh, just the better it felt. And I, I could just really, I don't know, unleash and just sort of become whatever it is I wanted. But I never imagined it that way. And same with the music. It just got to where it ended up just being perfect for me. And, and But it wasn't, it was not my idea by any stretch. It was just something that sort of happened and that I morphed into with the music and with the gear and the more I went out there, the more I went out there with Sherry, the more comfortable I got with it. And it just became, I don't know, to where me and the character were, you know, damn near, ident yeah. <laughs> damn near identical. That says the uh, best that when it comes up. I mean, authenticity, you know, especially I've been working with an acting coach. You know, it's not about right or wrong. It's about truth, truth and beliefs or uh, truth, beliefs and I don't know, something like that, but... Uh, He's not paying attention. Not paying classes. attention, sorry. Yeah. sorry. <laughs> um, but let's get into the match. Iron Man match, WrestleMania 12. What the hell are you thinking when they pitch you a 60-minute match? Now, this has got to be... that. I mean, that's got to be crazy. Well, so, look, at, on one hand, I know that they. this was something that, um, you know, one of the guys in our company, Pat Patterson, he always wanted, you know to have an Iron Man match. Um, he felt that Brett and I were the two guys that could do it. Um, Brett and I felt like we were the two guys that could do it. But at that time in the business, you know, having an hour match on a pay-per-view is a huge ask. 
You know what I mean? Can you keep them interested for an hour? Um, you know, can you build this match in a way that's, you know, I don't know if the viewer doesn't get, you know, bored stiff in the process. So that was, that was honestly the biggest hurdle for this match is, you know, continuing to make it exciting and continue to build, um, you know, till the very end. Um, and of course, one of the ways you can do that is by having a number of falls in the match. So you can have sort of a number of smaller matches, you know what I mean? And have a guy win three falls to two falls, but, you know, Brett and I really wanted to just have it come down to one fall. And certainly at that time, you know, there's always been, you know, from, from the old school guys, there was always this kind of, I don't know, this badge of honor that you wore. If you could go out there and do an hour, you know what I mean? I did an hour with, you know, you, you would hear stories growing up in the business from guys like Flair, Harley Race, Jack Briscoe. Yeah. I remember in 73, you know, me and Funk, we did an hour straight in St. Louis. Place was sold out to the rafters. You should have seen it. You know, you know, I mean, you kids today don't know, you know, what we went through going an hour, you know. So it was, it was one of those things that you wanted to be able to say in 1996. Yeah, you know, it was that time, WrestleMania 12, Hart and I went for an hour, sold out Anaheim Pond. You know, just another walk in the park, boys, you know. Um, so, you know, it was one of those things that, I don't know. It was it was a badge of honor. It yeah. was just something that not many people could say they did. Um, That's bad. And so um, you know, I don't know. That was a big moment for us. But honestly, that was the most intimidating thing was going an hour and and making it exciting. Did, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I mean, was it weird? Because you and Brett are kind of the stars of the show. I mean, I mean, this is you're coming up. Brett has been there, I guess, a little longer than you. He's thirty nine. You're thirty one. Was it hard? being these two, you know, stars when you didn't get along? Well, so at that time, Brett and I were getting along pretty well. Okay. I mean, so this, that was, that was the screw really job in Montreal. A lot of the That's when they went down. Exactly. Yeah. That was long before all of that kind of stuff. So this was honestly, you know, a very, you know, pretty darn you know, amicable times for, for Brett and I. So it was more about honestly, were you close to this time? You know, going out there and having a hell of a match. At this time, would you say you and Brett were close? Yeah, I, look, I think so. I mean, we were certainly, um, you know, far and away way better than um, we were later on down the line. We were certainly on the same page. It was This was the place where, um, you know, Brett had, you know, probably had the title for a year or two. Um, but he had always, you know, he had expressed it once that, you know, that he felt like I would be the next guy. You know what I mean? That That would be taking that championship. Um, and so as far as all of that was concerned from a professional standpoint, I think we were, we were pretty good. I, you know, there's always, clearly there's always a little uncomfortableness with the guy who's losing the title to a guy that's gaining it because it's sometimes, uh, more often than not, it means a transition from a company standpoint from going of one way of doing things to another. And so, um, you know, I certainly think that, when you go from a title from Brett to me, just from going to Brett in the first place was more of an acknowledgement that we were getting into more of the guys that could wrestle for long periods of time that could put on fantastic matches, as opposed to the champions of the past, like a Hogan, you know, that was more just a, I don't know, he was a, he was a huge selling point, but it wasn't, you know, a 30 minute match that he was selling you on. It was a, 10 or 15 minute match that he was selling you on, but it was Hulk Hogan. Did you respect you someone like I mean? Brett way more than a Hulk? Well, look at that time, you certainly do because you're into that version of wrestling. You know what I mean? I think over time, I've really come to understand and appreciate what it is to draw money period. You know what I mean? Um, and, and to understand that you don't, this business doesn't get where it's at. Without guys like Hulk Hogan, you know what I mean? Without guys like Steve Austin, The Rock, you know what I mean? You. All those guys were fantastic. You know, well, look, and look, I think there's me and there's Brett. I think there's a number of us. Um, but look, that was a time, I will say, admittedly, where we felt that it was more about work rate, as we would call it, than it was just being a big name. 
Well, you guys were wrestlers, wrestlers, I think. You, Brett, Flair, guys like that. And yeah. then there's guys who are kind of like big ticket guys who aren't in ring as, as gifted as guys like the three of you, you know? Yeah, and I think that's a fair statement. And, you know, again, when you're younger, you like I said, you're sort of, you're proud of that. And, of course, you want that to be, you know, the flavor of the day. I mean, th this was pretty much the gateway to the Attitude Era. Because he was the old school boxer, mm -hmm. or I mean, old school superstar. You were kind of that new young punk guy, you know, kind of cocky. That was like your swag about it. So this almost foreshadowed going into like uh, pretty much our generation yeah. of what we used to watch because that was still like, he, I felt that Bret Hart was still like part of the little, he was more of the old school and you were more a new school going into this fight. Would you agree with that or no? Well, yeah. Well, so certainly, well, yeah, well, certainly Bret was, comes from a more traditional purist background uh, th th than I was. And, and look, so, Part of the idea that got me turned into a good guy was that was because of my bad guy persona. Yeah. Was because of the cockiness and the brashness. Now, when I went to being a good guy and winning the championship, they wanted me to be a different kind of good guy, which obviously history would tell us that that wasn't the right move. You know what I mean? That people preferred the Shawn Michaels with attitude and arrogance and brashness and cockiness. But, you know, that was, again, that was still us trying to get out of that traditional purist style. So in some ways it was a bit of a transition. Yes. But from a company standpoint, Vince still felt like the good guys should be a bit more wholesome as opposed to uh, a good guy with an attitude which wouldn't come to pass until, you know, a couple of years later. He pioneered it. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, look, I think my bad guy aspects did. I mean, I think, you know, um, trying to put me in that box of being a good guy's good guy was a little difficult, especially at that time in my life, because, you know, that and the real guy were not, uh, we're not wholesome, shall we say. Yeah. Is it, it's gotta be more fun being the bad guy though. It's gotta be more fun getting booze. It's well, look, I don't know anybody that doesn't enjoy being a bad guy better than, you know, than, I tell you right now, being a good guy. Yeah. Because it's just so much, it, you're so much more freedom. Yeah. You know what I mean? I always loved, I, everyone always asked me, you know, did you love playing at Foxborough or did you like, I love playing on the road. Yeah. You go play at, you know, New York and these, and these fans are throwing dildos on the field and shit. Like, <laughs> That's the kind of shit I used to love and quiet them down. And I would embrace my inner fucking superstar wrestler mentality. And I, I literally they would put myself in a, a mindset like I'm a fucking I'm a villain. Hell it's yeah. it's respect. I mean, I remember I, I was doing a show in Buffalo and I mentioned Julian's name and they all started booing. And I was like, that's respect. <laughs> Yeah. That's because they were special. Well, no, but plus, and Julie, like it takes it takes you from a performance standpoint, I think, to another level. I mean, Julie, when, I mean, look, you guys, everywhere you went, you you guys were, you know, after a while, you guys were hated everywhere. We were like the and circus that coming just, into town. Everyone hated it. You know what right? I mean? Yeah. Well, it's, and that's because of that success. But that's that's what I don't know. Certainly for me, I know that's what almost pushed me to even be better and greater each time. Because again. The more they wanted you to fail, the more you upped your game. And so, yeah, I mean, one just feeds the other. And I don't think people understand that the more they do that, the better it makes you and the harder you are to be. Proving people wrong is always fun. But let's get let's get into the match. Beginning of the match okay. starts and everyone says it's kind of slow. But, I, you know, everyone says it started slow. I'm sitting here. These guys are about to wrestle for fucking 60 minutes. Like maybe they're like, like, let's feel let's feel let's feel each other out. Like, how did you, how did that beginning, like, was that the plan? Like, all right, we're going to build this thing up. And I heard you guys only, you designed this 20 minutes before the match. Uh, what you guys were well, going to no, kind of. So we, well, no, so we, we knew we, okay. So we knew we were having the hour, um, but I know like a week or two before, I know Brett sort of, you know, came to me and said like, Hey, how about we do this in like, you know, you think of the first 30. And I'll give some thought to the last 30. And then, you know, like a day before, we'll sort of come together and see where we're at, you know. And and uh, 
And of course, you know, we also, you know, we also talked about like, oh my goodness, we're out there for an hour. We can probably do darn near sort of every move under the sun. <laughs> you know, think about stuff you haven't done in quite a while. I mean, let's really just think about what we can do to open up sort of the playbook, so to yeah. speak. Um, and so that's honestly what we did kind of separately. Um, but then I think a day or two before we just sort of came together and, uh, you know, you kind of prepare notes or show, you know, show each other's notes. But again, back then you just can't really, that's the one upside of going an hour is that there is no rush. You know what I mean? You're not having to race against time cues and stuff like that. And you can sort of go out there and get a feel for what it is you want to do and where you're going. Um, so that's honestly what we did. We had a couple sort of what we call signposts in the road. You know I mean? Certain places in, at the match where you want to go like, okay, I feel like this is where we ought to be at about 20. This is where we need to be about 30, you know what I mean? And then 45. And then, you know, obviously those last five, you really want to make sure you nail down and button down. Um, but look, it's just, it's just a whole different way of trying to, I guess, have a match. You know what I mean? It's just unlike anything you've done before because it's, you know, it's stuff you, <laughs> yeah. it's stuff you haven't done before. So you got to go about it differently. But yeah, I mean, of course, you, you got to start off. Look, I, w- I would argue, you know what I mean? And I'll say this, look, you know what time in history does. I mean, people like, oh, starts out slow. And well, that's because now you know it's going an hour. You know what I mean? Um, you've been told and heard that it starts slow. So, you know, it's it's exactly now what everything you hear that it is. But I think at the time, you know what I mean? When you go in with the unknowns of not knowing how many falls we're going to do, how many falls are coming, because it is a marathon match where you, you know, you can add up falls. So clearly it builds slow, but it starts slow, but you don't know where it's going. And the thing is, you can't ever, you can't ever recreate the first, you know what I mean? And again, you know, very well, a play that, you know, again, dazzled them, you know, again, in, in 1997, you know what I mean? Or 2003, you know, seeing it on a number of, you know, a number of highlight reels and then, you know, calling it again, you know, in 2022, it's not quite the same, you know what I mean? But the first time it was very different. It was innovative and it worked. And look, that's one of the, that's one of the mindsets you have to go into watching this match. And I don't think a lot of people have the ability to do that now so many years, you know, distant from it. This was like the first time I remember we're like 15 minutes were fought outside the ring. And I would say the momentum, and when I was like, oh, my God, what the fuck, is when you kicked the uh, timekeeper. <clears throat> Tony yeah. Schimmel? To- yeah. Now, did, yeah. Was, was, that in the, was that in the process of like, all right, I'm going to kick this dude right in the face, you move your head, or, or what? Or did that just happen? Because it didn't look – that dude took, took that boot to the face. That, that, <laughs> I'm telling yeah. you. Wasn't he stretchered out? Yes. Yeah, yeah he was. Um, and it was, it was you know – Pretty good in there, um, but it, you know, very very honored to say I didn't. I don't, you know, I, I didn't injure anybody. Um, but no, that was something. No, that, he did. Uh, again, he was stretchered was, off. Okay, was, <laughs> he was yeah. fucking stretchered <laughs> off. Yes. Well, dif- difference between hurt. Didn't say I didn't hurt him. Hurt and didn't injured. Injured. Him. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Exactly. If football guys Big know difference. that too. Coach, him look at yeah. you. Hey, you hurt or you injured? Uh, coach, I'm hurt. All right, we'll see you. Yeah. Get back in. <laughs> Right. Hurt, hurt, you can survive and get back in there. You keep going. That's exactly right. Was there a point? So, during- I, oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say that was something that somebody had suggested that we thought was freaking fantastic. Yeah. Um, but no, that is not anything. Again, this was a time in, in our business. You didn't go over stuff. You didn't. You were a pro. Yeah. You don't get out there. You don't practice. This is one of those things that you go like, OK, this is what's going to happen. All right. And you go out there and you make it happen. Um, and you trust that everybody's going to be there and do what they have to do. And of course, being out there with a guy like Brett, that was absolutely no problem. I knew he was going to get out of the way. It's just, a, you know, it was just a matter of you know, how hard I end up kicking Tony. <laughs> I mean, you talk about Brett just making the right decisions and like you improvise so much with Brett because you can. I mean, there's so much that can happen there, but uh, you've been in some epic matches going up to this. I mean, the, the ladder match, Razor Ramon, like, was there something about Brett in the ring where you were like, oh, shit, this is like, 
This, was there a point in this match where you're like, this is special? Well, because he was always technically like one of the best. Yeah. Like Who you is? could always tell, like if you watch your guys' match, like you could always tell as, you know, these guys are executing their fucking shit, right? And everything looks extremely like it's very painful. It hurts. I mean, everything was smooth. The transition from each guy, like the athleticism wise, the act, you know, the wrestling, it was insane. Like, so look, because he is unbelievably precise in all of that, and and I will say, being in there with a guy like him makes you better. You know what I mean? In that kind of stuff, where you, where again, I feel like I had all the flash, the dazzle. Um, I think I was good wrestling, but I, I, I've always said, you know, if we're talking about, you know, I know there, I, I got asked on a on an interview once, like, who's a better wrestler, you or Bret Hart? And I just and I, you know, for the first time it dawned on me like, oh, better wrestler, Brett, <laughs> for sure. Brett, um, better, you know, better performer, showman, performer, me. But there's a difference. But Brett was so precise and so good in everything he did that I felt like it made me better and more attentive to all of those things, to the transitions, to the working of the holds. And that's one of the things that I always, I always enjoyed uh, about him because he just always made people better to answer your question is yes you know yeah you feel pressure because look nobody has a bad match with Bret Hart thankfully at that time you know nobody was having bad matches with me so between the two of us we understood you know the the the, the pressure and the the bar at which the two of us had set and that's that's where it all comes down to you have to deliver on that bar and that's 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 a, a pressure and a burden both of you are carrying in that match. But you know, obviously, you know, you rise to that, and that's what makes you better. Yeah, and and then the end of the fight, legendary finish. I don't think anyone's ever not tapped in the sharpshooter. He gets you in there, hold it for thirty two seconds. We think it's a draw. I'm like ten years old. Like what the fuck? It's a draw. It's WrestleMania. No way. <laughs> Bret Hart leaves the arena or leaves the ring. They call him back in. You have to do it. You're dazed and confused, and get the sweet chin music. Like the ending was, the the ending was gnarly. Yeah, I mean this is this is an epic match. I mean, is this where does this rank all time for you as a Shawn Michaels match, and where does this rank all time for you as a WrestleMania match? So it's, it's, it's extremely special um, and near the top, obviously on, on, in both categories there, because, you know, it's, it's WrestleMania, it's with Brett, it's an hour, and it's for the championship. Those are worlds that, believe it or not, those don't always come along. You know, I mean, a lot of guys win world titles, but they're not all at WrestleMania. They're not in the main yeah. event. You know, they're not in a first time ever done match. You know what I mean? So when all those worlds come together, um, it's hard for it not to be special. And I think that's, it, it's, it's because it's what it is in all those categories. It has its own place that it sits there in specialness. You know what I mean? Um, that I think it lives on its own. Um, look, there are times that, you know, again, people have been critical about the match, you know, they, and of course, everything you go back and you look at and you go like, well, yeah, no, I might've changed this, might've changed that. Um, that's just the, I don't know. I think that's just the professional in all of us. You know, I don't know that I've ever had a match that I go back and I look at and I go like, well, I could have done this better. I could have done that better. But I think, I don't know. I think everybody does that because they're, you know, they're their own worst critics. But, you know, I look back on so much of my career. I'm, I'm proud of, I don't I got to do a lot of really cool stuff um, that I look back on other guys' careers and they didn't have as many of those cool moments as I did. That is certainly one of them. Uh, and I'm honored to have, I don't know, again, the fact that you get to have a whole show where you talk about it, lets you know how, you know, lets you know how cool that match is and how, how it, you know, reigns in the, in the hearts of other people that watched it. I mean, you guys, you guys were the main event for an hour in a WrestleMania. Like that's, yeah, that, that, that's a token of how good you guys were because you're, you're taking time from other people. I mean, that's, that's when you guys were the stars of the of the world at that time you you both of you yeah, well it's 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 one half or one third of a you know of an entire paper yeah year, you know what i mean just for you guys where do you you know what i mean and that was huge and unheard of at the time where do you rank i mean who's your number one wrestler is flair your guy yeah i mean yeah i'll it, it i'll just always you know i'll always lean to rick for sure Woo! um 
Yeah, because you know, just because of he's the one that made this job look like it was the coolest job in the world. You know, what I mean, I just I knew that I wanted to do it, but then he just sort of encapsulated everything that you imagined the job would be and could be. And so, uh, yeah, I'll always I think I'll always lean to Rick as being my guy. Look, right behind that falls Tully Blanchard and Wahoo McDaniels, because those are the two guys I started out with in Texas. Um, but, uh, you know, it, 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 I think when it, everything's said and done, it comes down to Rick. Wow. How do you feel about being the one that ended his career? Again, honored because of, of of everything that, you know, I don't know, it meant to him and to me to have that match. Yeah. Um, you know, again, that was that was the 15 year old kid in me going out there with the guy that, you know, I I just admired for so long um, and having the opportunity to take him, I think, to a moment and something in his career that he'll remember forever. That's where, again, I don't know, I guess, Julie, you know, when you guys share a Super Bowl moment or a, I don't know, a pass and a reception and a play that, you know, people will never forget. In our little world, I guess that's how it is for us. You know what I mean? When you're able to do something with someone that means more to you than just a teammate um, and you're able to take him to do something that he puts at the very top of his career, um, I don't know. That that was that was very important to me, I guess. So it has a lot of personal uh, you know, respect in my heart as well. A lot of things with sports, what people don't realize is the relationships you have with men that you compete with, compete against. Uh, you know, th those are the things that you take away. Like we can sit here and talk about all oh, the party and the matches of this, that, but it's probably the relationships, and I'm assuming, that you take away from this thing that that you cherish for the longest you know, the longest time. It, it absolutely is for me. Yeah. Now I, I apologize. I didn't mean no, 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 no. Get out of here. Get out of here. Now let's, let's do a little, uh, little make believe you're, you're, you're booking with next right now. Say you had to rebook the fight between you and Bret Hart in the Ironman match. What would you change it? Would you do something different? How would you do it? Well, so look now here in the, I don't know, right? I'm, in NXT now, I think if we uh, if we had an hour marathon match, um, look, I think we could, depending on if we, I don't know if I'd go to the one fall. Um, if I did go to just the one fall, I wouldn't go to the overtime. You know what I mean? Uh, I think you'd capture it in the last, I don't know, 59, 35 or something like that. Like you think it's going down to the wire. Um and 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 I, I I think I would nowadays you would have to up the pace a bit. You'd have to have your wind. You'd have to keep it uh, moving faster than we did. I think at the beginning uh, to keep them interested. And that's if you don't go with uh, several falls throughout. I think we need to go to several falls. It's a much easier build um, to come down to where you can tie it up. You know, say two a piece, and then you're coming down to fifty nine. 30, 59, 40, and then you capture that last fall at 59, 58. Oh, my goodness, he's the new world champion. We'll see you next week. <laughs> yeah. How are you and Brett now? Uh, fantastic. Uh, Brett and I um, That's good to hear. saw each other last WrestleMania. And, uh, yeah, no, so we are obviously with uh, a number of the A&E uh, documentaries and stuff like that, they've done uh, many on Brett and myself. Um, and of course the, the story and Montreal and everything else. Um, but yeah, we saw each other at, uh, at WrestleMania and it was, it was unbelievably nice, very pleasant. We're both in a great place in our lives. Um, and again, I always, you know, I always, uh, sort of comment, you know, cause I think he knows how important it is to me for us to be where we're at. And he always sort of just pats me on the shoulder and, and Brett's, Brett, Brett's always had just a very calming, uh, you know, presence about him. He pats me on the shoulder, shoulder, and just very quietly says, "We're good, Sean. We're good." You know what I mean? And uh, and I know that he means that. And again, to me, for both of us to be at this place in our lives and for us to have experienced so much, you know, both together and individually away from the ring, um, personally and professionally, I think we're at a fantastic spot. Wouldn't change it for anything in the world. I love it. Now, uh, Sean, you know I'm a free agent. I know you're you're doing this whole, you know, NXT 
you kind of mentor these young wrestlers. If if I were to give her the shot, you know, what persona should I go? Do you think I have an opportunity where well, I look, could do it? Maybe you're going to have to go. Oh yeah, are you kidding? Are you, are you kidding? We took a punter for heaven's <laughs> sakes, dude. I mean, Pat that could be <laughs> all right. And and you, my friend, you know, are way more athletic than McAfee. So, and you know, you know, and Pat was pretty darn good. So, are you kidding? You'd you'd be a piece of cake, man. You'd be a you'd be a machine. Plus, with your work ethic, it, it wouldn't be tough. I'd have to be so, a villain. I think kidding? we could have, we could have you. Oh, for sure. Oh yeah. Well, that look, that just comes natural to you. Well, and plus, down here in Florida, you know what I mean? They love they, You know, coming from New England, you don't have a chance. Doesn't matter <laughs> where you're actually from, mister. As far as everybody's concerned, you know what I mean? You're a New England Patriot, and that's it. So they'll boo you out of the building no matter where you go. I love it. I love it. I used to welcome it. I used to say, <laughs> I'm like, Papa, I am what I am. I'm just giving you a little uh, little something maybe to work with. <laughs> Another one for Julian, because you you were famously in Playgirl. Do you think Julian can pull that <laughs> off? Yeah, well, are you, are you still in shape? I'm in shape. You still I'm in got, shape, Coach. Still got the abs going and everything? Yeah, abs are, abs are right. there. Fair enough. Abs are there, legs. So that's, all, that's all I've learned. If you got the abs, you can damn near get away with anything. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, my legs have shrunken a little just because of the load. But that's a good thing in other areas. It makes other things look bigger. So I think I'm actually in a good spot right a now. A load, a load makes my uh, leg shrink too. Actually, <laughs> how many kids yeah, do you think got right. suspended? Well, so take it from me. I... Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> a lot. No, I was going to say, don't you be safe with me that I always cover up the legs. So don't worry about that. <laughs> we, got, we, got, we got ways of accentuating the body parts. Of need to be accentuated. This, that's what this business is. I, I, and to answer your question, more kids got expelled than, than I can possibly shake a stick at. <laughs> For um, the degeneration other Suck it. That's a, oh, yeah. You know who was yep, one of those kids? It's still happening today. You know who's one of those kids? I got suspended for saying suck it or doing a suck it to my, my PE teacher at lunch. And a lady walking by flagged him down, told him I end up getting suspended for a day of school because I said, suck it. At least, you know, it, it was, or I didn't, I gave him a double jump. Fucking give him one of those. Mr. Callis yelled at me, he already hated me. Teachers knew what was coming if you said, if you're not down with this, we got two words for you. I'd get thrown out before I could even get to suck it. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, look, the, uh, I claim to fame is that now we got girls here doing it. Yeah. Right? And that is, look, that's, uh, that's cons that counts you know, as consent. That, that's again, it's, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. You can't, you, oh my goodness. you said that, I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying to actually see, I mean, you know, women, kids, everybody doing that. It, I, it is, it is absolutely uh, hilarious. And, you know, heaven forbid, I hope the world can take a joke. Hey, I don't know. This is we're an anti-cancel podcast, so you don't have to worry about that. We take jokes here. Uh, Sean, I mean, uh, legend. Thank you so much for joining us. Sexy boy, heartbreak kid. He's just a sexy boy. Sexy boy. He's not your boy, toy. Boy, toy. The heartbreak kid, the sexy boy. <laughs> I mean, epic. It, 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 this was honestly, I was so nervous getting into this because you're such a huge part of our you know, part of me when I was a kid, you know, and enjoying uh, your career, you know, and now you're working with well, I, NXT. I got, yeah, look, I just got to say, look, I, I appreciate it. Cause I, oh, I'm just saying, young man, I've watched you. It's been a, I don't know, been, you, know you were just a hell of an athlete, hell of a football player, man. And it was, uh, I appreciate, uh, I don't know, I appreciate talent. You know what I mean? Uh when I see it, you know what it takes to, I don't know, you just made a lot of sacrifices, deserved every one of those rings, and I appreciate you, uh, I don't know, having me on, man, and I don't know, let me walk down, uh, you know, glory road for a little while. Hey, you're still in the glory land, buddy. You, you're, you have a, you have, you've done something that not many people, I would say, well, how many WrestleMania champions are there? Not a lot. You know, so, like, that is insane. We have... So much respect for you. Now you're working for the WWE NXT that what airs on Tuesdays, eight o'clock on USA. Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, every Tuesday night, live eight a.m. to I'm sorry, eight p.m. to ten p.m. USA Network, and obviously this weekend, 
premium live event on Peacock, Halloween Havoc. It's our biggest, you know, premium live event of the year. Uh, going to be a hell of a show. Absolutely. You miss it? You know what? I, you know, I don't miss the physical stuff. I mean, I get to live vicariously through these young men and women. It's obviously great being a part of the creative. Um, and so it really is. I love what I'm doing now. I love trying to help out uh, the WWE for the future and, and, and all the young men and women that come through this place. Um, it's my honor to help them again, get to, get to, uh, be a part of the same moments that I got to be a part of. Um, I know how great it is to, to get to do that and to just to be, be a part in helping them do that in their careers. Uh, I dig doing it. It's a hell, it's a hell of a lot of fun. Dude. Well, we, we, we thank you so much for taking the time, uh, and coming out and sharing your stories. It's been an unbelievable honor. Uh, you're our, you're our first superstar. Uh, from WWE and and we 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 picked you on purpose because we that match was that transition into that attitude period, which basically became our childhood. Uh, did we miss anything? No, no, not that I can think of. Nothing. I, mean, I don't even know what the hell you. The was. zip line. The zip line. <laughs> yeah, we missed something. The zip oh line in. God. That was He's a pretty not epic. Show up. Yeah, Jerry He's Lawler screaming. He chickened out. No. He chickened out. And then you come down on the zip line. Pretty bad. <laughs> that was insane. It's probably yeah. the best entrance. Yeah. No, thank you for taking the time. Still man. the coolest entrance to this day. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sean. Dude, that was epic. And, and now we know you have to actually, you really have to be a wrestler. I kind of pussied out there. Well, how'd you pussy out? I didn't show my abs. That could have been my, that, that would have. Give us a taste. I, nah, he's not here, but I should have. I should have showed him my abs. Because that, that was pretty much an interview. Yeah. That was an interview that I failed. You didn't fail. You were great. And, and you're going to be, I think he could be, we need to work on your persona for like a Florida wrestler. South Florida Hurricane Jules. I keep coming down these streets, getting eaten up by mosquitoes, seeing how weathered everything looks. I'm a California kid, and it's nothing but humidity and trash out here in South Florida. I'm going to treat them. We're, we're booing? No, we're no, booing? No, no, this no, is exactly no. how it sounded after we would come down here twice a year to beat the shit out of the Miami Dolphins. Boo. Yeah, we got to work on that. That's guys. good. We got to work on that. We yeah. We got to work on that. I'm glad Naples is underwater. Boo. <laughs> Sam, with, he, Sam has South Florida hate too. I do. I do have some South Florida. South Florida. Yeah, I saw that meme from that, that Dolphins fan. I got the most punchable face. Well, come. Why don't you come see me? <laughs> okay, why don't you come see this me over here? segment on Raw. Why don't the guy you come actually see comes me? out. Julian gives him one super kick. I got the most punchable face in here. What, what street are we on? Canal Street, New York, New York. Yeah. But you're, you're too we'll broke. You He's ticket, from South dude. Florida. He doesn't we'll have enough money to fly up here. We'll fly you out, coach. But we'll fly you out. I'm looking for you. Yeah. Let's. Did we get the prop? This, did we set? Did we hit it? Here in my Google Doc. Thankfully, not my search bar. Seven sexy boys. We hit got it. it. You know who's excited when you hear that? Uh, Kevin Spacey. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. No, we hit seven sexy boys. That's pretty good. I'm impressed. I didn't think we pulled it off. We no, at the, the end. Wire. The end. Nice. I, I heard you, you you put on the full court press, so then I we had to I went it. to it the double team. I went to double team the, the inbound. In sexy boys, yeah. There. We, we, we double teamed. We crammed it in. Yeah, yeah but it was all consensual. Um, was, yeah. The legacy for this match... It's one of the greatest, I think. I, I, it had to be. I mean, this was like the start. When you say the Iron Man match in wrestling, this is the Iron Man match. Our match? Yeah. Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels. Yeah. Sexy Boy versus, what was he, the Executor? The best there is, the best there was, and the, the best, best there ever will be. be. The Hitman. The Hitman Hart. That's, those are it was cool to see that. It was cool to see them, like, you could tell from when we were asking sean questions about michael yeah i mean sean asking questions about brett yeah you could hear it in his voice that he lo like they love each other you know they're, they're they're such a huge part of each other's history even though in the time and moment of that fight there was hostility that was probably gaining because he's you don't want to say the replacement but there was a passion of the torch in someone 100 so. i mean no one no one wants to be the backup quarterback 
No. Unless you're Jimmy. Unless you're Cooper. Cooper Rush. That guy's he's that guy's doing it. Yeah, not this weekend. But he's but he's he humbled but he's, my but he's my had picks. a good he's had a good he had a cute I'm one. holding my own in this fantasy football league, by the way. You beat me last week. Yeah, I'm holding my own, dude. You didn't Saquon. even start someone and you beat me. I you know what? I, I, had, I time for confession. You guys kept hitting me up, like, when, when can you do it? I'm like, no nights work for me. So I just had to be like, whatever, I'll figure it out. I'm doing it in between sets at the cellar. I'm talking to Colin Quinn, like, what do you think of this pick? He's like, I don't fucking know. So I'm literally just, like, trying to figure this out. And then I'm like, shit, I'm going on stage. Auto pick for this pick. This guy's run off, get off. Shit, two more picks. I was, I was scrambling. I was like fucking Mahomes, just trying to make shit happen. And Bro, like you, Mahomes, I delivered. You sandbagged so hard. You were so unsure of your team. I was. Under I was hitting up Jack. I was you like, how do I look, man? bro. I look at you. Yeah. I got fully fucked. Did you? Yeah, because I had auto pick. And who'd I get my first pick? Some terrible. I got uh, the running back, Edmonds. I got Edmonds from Miami. That's my first pick. Yeah, I missed yeah. two rounds. I'm out of the league now. Damn. Missed two rounds. I, Josh Allen and Saquon were my first two picks. Pretty good picks. Not Saquon's a really good pick right now. I think he's leading everything in. You try not to bet with your heart, but like, I'm a Giants fan. I got to take Saquon. And yeah. Josh Allen was a good first pick. That guy's a fucking tank. Bye, uh, bye, bye. Anyway, uh, the lasting image of this match. What do you think of? Lasting image of this match? For me? Yeah. I'd have to say him getting out of the the, the sharpshooter. Ooh. Like, that was a huge wrestling move in my household. My brother gave it to me. I gave it to my sister. Everyone always tapped to see Shawn Michaels not tap and bring it into overtime. Yeah. That's spectacular. This that is was, almost like the 28-3 to 3 game in some ways. Goes into OT. Goes into OT. Once Once we knew it go, was going into OT, you knew Shawn Michaels. Once he, exactly. That's a momentum. It's like football game. Once you have the momentum, it's over. But he also, for me, the lasting image is him like almost crying, sweaty, right after he pins Brett. Either that or the super kick. Because either way, you know, you know, that's, that's it's Sean's can, time. But also, I mean, the entrance was pretty tight. It was badass, for sure. That's a big image. Huge. Zip line. Fully in. Yeah, that was awesome. The pictures of... McMahon doing it, yeah, in his jeans. He had to try it. It's a good boss. You got to try this stuff, huh? So the name of the name of the of the, of the match here. Did we forget anything, Jack? Oh, sorry, Jack. Yeah, what, did we forget anything? I think we're good on stuff. Just a couple of uh, clarifications on a couple of things we talked about: the Browns moving in the middle of the night with those Mayflower trucks. Um, they were deactivated for three years. Mm. As of 96, so they came back in 99. Felt like 10 years. Felt like a while. and then, Felt like 10 years for New York. Speaking of feeling Ohio. like a while, that Cleveland Sports Championship drought, 64 to 2016. Mm. 52 years. There's got to be more, though. I don't think Detroit, or Detroit's got baseball teams, hockey. Um, Jacksonville doesn't have one. It's not a sports town. Yeah, they only got one major. Or one? Yeah, they only got hockey. Triple A baseball or something. Uh, yeah, that's... That's a long time. And then we talked um, WrestleMania 12. We talked about getting it for free. No pay-per-view over here. Over at uh, whose house we're at, Jeff's. Yeah, oh, my boy Jeff. <laughs> the cost of that pay-per-view, twenty nine ninety five. That was a lot of money. That's a lot of Back money. Back then, yeah. And Monday Night Raw, longest running weekly episodic program in the U.S., over 14,000 original episodes. More than The Simpsons? Simpsons? Oh, yeah. How long has it been going? It has been going, let me see. I think like it was close. That was the first time it did in 95. Longer than SNL? Let me see. Yeah, I'm I'm call wait, that yeah, that wait. Jack, did we, we miss stack- something or did we- you miss something here? <laughs> yeah. Jack. We need a stat correction within the stat correction. 83 or 93, sorry. 93, so SNL total episode. But it's probably a, it's probably some category. It might be more <clears throat> SNL is only 880 episodes because they take breaks. What about Simpsons? 20 episodes. Breaks. That's a good point. Yeah. It said the NFL is also a long run. So. Yeah, we're. All right, Jack. You Simpsons were right. Simpsons is 730 as of October. We never should have questioned Jack, dude. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I think otherwise, heck of an episode. 
Well, what's the name of the game, guys? What do you? Th I, I mean, I think it's the Iron Man match, no doubt. But the, the other option, sixty minute men, uh, which is also a good grinder profile uh, name. The real night. What is it? The I don't 60? want no mini <laughs> Um, the real one? sixty minutes. I think it's got to be Iron Man match. I don't think it's even a debate. It's the Iron Man match. Yeah, it's the Iron Man match. I mean, no. Yeah. Cal Ripken, you're not the Iron Man. Sean no Mike. Disrespect to Cal Ripken, man. Actually, Cal we Ripken. want you on here, Sean. Uh, I, Cal uh, Ripken's Cal a Ripken. fucking. Yeah, he's, a, he's stud. a stud. But did you hear that? Wasn't that. Didn't they like postpone a game because of Kevin Costner? Oh, I love that. Oh, my gosh. What happened? Kevin Costner was having an affair, I think, what? with his wife. He found out, got pissed, made an excuse for the team to cancel the game. He, Kevin Costner was having an affair with Cal Ripken's wife? I think so. I don't know. This is just yeah. all speculation. Paraphrasing. Yeah, no, I could be fully wrong. Yeah, and the Orioles were like, oh, power's out tonight. Power outage. No Power game. outage. Sounds like the power went out in his household a long time ago. <laughs> Catch my drift. <laughs> uh, damn, that's brutal. Costner. He's even more evil than on Yellowstone. That's fucked up. I mean... Costner's like the... Ba that's not, That sucks because... Costner's the baseball guy. So he's like the baseball guy. You can't watch Field of Dreams, Bull Durham for love of the game. For love of the Ripken's game. Ripken's got to avoid a shitload of classics. He can't even watch his own sport no. on the on on the green screen. Yeah, they're like, "Do you want to watch?" He's like, "I'll watch The Natural." <laughs> what if What if Robert Redford fucks his wife? Then he's really out of luck. He can't watch any sports movie. <laughs> How wow. do we score this game? Stakes are it's it's high. Stakes are high here. Stakes are pretty high. Because Sean doesn't win. It's Wrestle there's WrestleMania is once a year. You don't get a lot of shots. This is the Super Bowl of wrestling. And this is probably one of the strongest times. And it's the two big names in the sport. It's got to be stakes have got to be like nine something. I, am I crazy for this? Kyler's he's annoyed that I'm saying this already. I can tell. What do you what, what do you think? Not it's not nine. It's WrestleMania and it's an Iron Man match. Two guys. It's not the height. It's not Stone Cold. It's it. I would say it's probably like a, I love Stone Cold, but I think Sean's a better in ring guy. I think for, if you want to go for name, fine. But if we're talking in, if, stakes. I mean, I would say a high eight, eight eight, eight eight sounds right. All right, reasonable. Star power is. I I know you're saying these. I mean, they were the biggest names. They were the biggest of the time of that time. I mean. I would say probably a high eight. Eight eight again. This is a Michael Irving score. <laughs> Damn. Gameplay. I mean, you got to give him props. This is a fucking started a little slow, but you, but as you said, it had to. I had to. Yeah. Competitive stamina was a huge thing on this on this night. Yeah. Competitive stamina. I I still have nightmares of hearing McDaniel say that week fourteen. Competitive stamina. What do you say? Nine two for gameplay. I mean, it's it's one of the greatest wrestling matches ever. I think we got it. Nine two, nine two. Name the Iron Man match. I mean, that's pretty. It's pretty epic. This isn't going to be a high score for us, dude. Is it going to be the highest though? No. I okay. mean, it's it's up there. I'm 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 saying probably eight. Or are you going lower? Low eight. Low eight. Eight four. Eight two. Eight two. Eight two. All right. What's our total? What's our total? This is high. Eight seven five. That's one of our biggest. Eight eight. The eight, was this eight? an aggressive score? I think it fits honestly. Eight eight puts it at number three overall. What, what's ahead of it right now? <clears throat> Behind Giants Patriots eighteen and one, <laughs> and then Titans Rams. Super Bowl the thirty for the yeah. longest yard, man. Which was an eight nine. Hate me though, we really gave a lot of props. But that guy did not care for me at all. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it was the uh, jerk off joke to a you know a, a God fearing Christian. <laughs> well, I'm a, I'm a Kurt Warner fearing Jew. After that, <laughs> Jesus Christ, he hated me. Oh man, but we're right in front of twenty eight to three. Whoa, this just got twenty eight to three. Just got jumped. <laughs> That's rough, man. Yeah. Can we can't all go, be winners. I mean, that's tough, dude. That's can't a, all be winners. Three is legendary, but this is like this is you do have to give this match respect. This was, yeah, this. I mean, this is a big match. It's a big match. Are there? I don't know if there's many wrestling matches I can. I want to hear in the comic se comment uh, comment section. 
Yeah, what do we, you guys are we, think? Are we giving it too much? Are Was we, this are too we, high? I don't know. I think it's got to be. I mean, it, it's high. All right. Well, follow Games With Names on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. TikTok. I said, well, I don't even know what I said right TikTok. Subscribe. Subscribe. Yeah. Oh, we're finishing each other's sentences. Wow. This is like a rom-com, dude. Oh, my God. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. Comment. Give a like, a click, rate, review. Suggest a game. We want to hear from you. Yeah. And that's all for this episode of Games and Names presented by WinBet. Thank you for listening. And thank you again to our sponsors. Follow us on all social medias. Sites, platforms at Games with Names. I'm Julian Edelman. I'm Sam Morell, and we'll see you next game. <laughs>